Welcome to Crossroads. My name is Joe. I'm one of the. Co He's farther behind than I am. I thought I was late getting up here. Here's our other co pastor, Dave. We want to welcome you uh, to Crossroads this morning. Happy Easter. And so we're going to begin with a reading. Yesterday, we had lost so much. We lost the light. We lost the argument. We lost love. We lost life. We lost God. We lost Jesus. But this morning, we found the tomb empty, the morning bright, the gardener walking, the stone rolled, the disciples running, the women proclaiming, the resurrection waiting, and Jesus risen. It is good we have found our way back here. This is Easter Day. Love is back. Would you please rise and join us in our call to worship? You got the bold words. I got the other ones. Rejoice, there is great news. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let all the earth proclaim the joy. Let all heaven show forth in praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices. Come let us worship our King. Come let us bow at His feet. He has done great. See what our Savior has done, see how his love overcomes, he has done great things, he has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. Your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. You've been faithful through every stone. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. I know you will do it again For your promise 
promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. God, you do great things. A hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. Your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Amen. All right, we were both running up here, so I don't think we introduced ourselves. I'm Joe, I'm one of the co pastors around here. I'm Dave. I'm the other one. <laughs> All right. And we do have a number of uh, announcements just because on a day like today, we want to make sure you get connected to everything that's going on around here. And so the first one we want to tell you about is Right Now Media. And the way Right Now Media works, it's like a Netflix except for it's full of really high-quality Bible studies and lots of great programs for families and kids. And so you go on there. I'm just going to show you some of the things you can do. Um, here you see there's all sorts of stuff for kids. You see the Kids Easter series. Then there's popular Christian uh, living studies. You keep going. Popular kids shows. I know kids love that super book. And then Veggie Tales, of course, is a you know, longtime favorite. Bible studies for youth. Bible studies on marriage. Just lots of really good uh, things on there. If you're part of the church, a couple of weeks ago, you got an email that had the link so that you can sign up for that. We're going to send that out again tomorrow so that if you didn't get a chance to sign up, you can sign up. Now, here's the thing on this. If you're part of the church, if you're in the room or you're online, you're part of the church, then you can access it and you can set it up for you and your entire household, and it's free. The church pays just a one time, you know, a church pays a cost that lets everybody in the church um, access it. So that is our, that's our gift to you. And so please take advantage of it. Now notice at the top where it says Crossroads Community Church. If you click on Crossroads Community Church, then it'll take you to our specific church page. And on our specific church page, you, you'll, you'll see, you know, you'll recognize uh, those folks, right? And, um, but you'll get the Sunday messages then if you scroll down, you'll see the, uh, the Bible study that the women's group is in Philippians right now. And then you'll also see like what the men's group is working on right now. I know a number of people in both those groups, they got to miss a day and then they can stay up, you know, they can stay up with the lesson. So uh, feel free to take advantage of that. Again, that link will come out tomorrow. You just click on it and you can set it up. Uh, if you're not getting the emails, drop us a line at info at ecrossroads.net and we will add you, we'll add you to the email list so that you can get signed up for that. We got some other stuff happening around here. Uh, the men's retreat uh, coming up uh, in May uh, 20th through the 22nd in Marysville there out by Holly. Really great opportunity. You know, I was saying in the last service, I, you know, I'm not always the best retreat loving person <laughs> uh, and uh, but several years ago when the men's group started doing this I started going and I love it it was a great great retreat I'm not gonna be able to make it this year because my grandson is graduating high school Woo. and I'll be in Florida uh, celebrating that but yeah uh, Joe will be there leading that it's a great time it's right on a lake if you've never been there um, it's beautiful and, uh, it, they used to let you go fishing is there still fishing Jeff Still able to go fishing. It's beautiful grounds. It's a great time to just get away and uh, be with be with other men of the church, hang out, and get connected to God in a greater way. So I'm going to add one thing to that. So, you know, in a church family, there's always people who diff do different things and have different things that they bring. So the, the one guy who just brings really solid food along with his helpers every time is Jeff right here. And if you've ever been to any of our competitions, like he wins most of them, right? So Jeff is doing the meal on Friday night. So in other words... Bone-in ribeye prime. 
And yes, you have to come for Saturday too, people, <laughs> not just Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> all right so definitely be a part of that here's another fun one we got coming on yeah this one uh the, the dessert theater coming up uh this is an exciting one and any cast members in the room want to <laughs> shout out to the dessert theater uh you know so a couple of years ago we do we do an annual uh fundraiser for renewed hope counseling center which, quick plug on that, you know, is on the church property. There's four therapists, licensed therapists there, and we're able, because we're a nonprofit, and because of these fundraisers and things we do, we're able to help people who are, you know, either on a fixed income or don't have insurance, they can't afford counseling, um, and they're able to come. And so we're able to be able to help anyone. And so this, you know, we annually do this fundraiser for Renewed Hope, which we do this dessert theater. So two years ago, we were two weeks away from doing this play, and COVID hit. And we thought, all right, well, we'll do it in a couple of weeks. <laughs> two years later. <laughs> we said, we'll do it in May. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so two years later, uh, we're finally getting to do it. Uh, so, and the cast has been really working hard, having a lot of fun working on this. And so this is a great opportunity to come. You know, bring some friends. All the proceeds will go uh, after cost, that is, of the dessert. All the proceeds will go to help out at Renewed Hope Counseling. Also, what we need is servers. So if you're able to come on Friday uh, the 29th or Saturday the 30th and come and just help serve desserts and coffee, um, that would be really greatly appreciated. I want to just give a little bit of a, a summary of what to expect it's a two-act play. It's a murder mystery. There will be a time where the audience gets to vote on who done it, and so we'll give that opportunity. So the the kind of synopsis of the play is there's a couple of uh, there's a there's a couple of actors playing cops uh, in this town called Preston, and their kind of low-budget show gets canceled after three seasons. They're out of a job, but the town of Preston doesn't have any cops, so they hire them as actual policemen. <laughs> and that goes fine at first because, you know, it's a little town, there's no crime, until there's a murder at this bed and breakfast in Preston, and these, these actor cops are got, have to figure out what to do. They have to bring in an actual detective, and then they try to work with all these crazy people in this uh, bed and breakfast who all seem like they're suspect. <laughs> and so uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you come out and... Um, just enjoy that and help out a good cause for Renewed Hope Counseling. And to get tickets, there'll be tickets available uh, after the service. Laura is going to be, Laura will be selling tickets uh, afterwards. Or if you're online, you can go to our website, and when you click the little Give button, it'll bring up a link to PayPal. And when you put in the amount and you click in, there'll be a box that says Notes. And you can write in there, this is dessert theater, what day you want, Sat Friday or Saturday night. Also, if you go to Facebook, people of the cast have posted little things of how to do a two-step process to get tickets online. And if you have any questions or problems, you know, click on e -cross info at ecrossroads.net, and we'll get, you, uh, we'll get you the tickets. And? No, no and. Go to the next slide. <laughs> and this play was written by... Dave. <laughs> I'm always a little leery to say that because I want people to. Come. I know. I should have told them at the end. All right. The, uh, but here, yeah, and I really want people to come to this next one. So here's another thing that happened during the pandemic. We had this great idea. Hey, man, let's have a 5K and raise money for Renewed Hope Counseling Center, Active Faith in town, and the health clinic in town. And then that, we're like, oh, the pandemic, we really can't get, you know, 100 people together and have them, you know, breathe really hard. So let's, um, let's do this. Let's have, let's two of us, instead of doing a 5K, we'll do a 50K. So Jeff over here and myself, we ran 50K and you guys supported that. And then we said, okay, we got to do it again. So year two, instead, year one was 31 miles. Year two was 33 and a half miles. And we did it 
and we, but we made it both years, and we raised a whole bunch of money, but we're like, boy, won't it be great if we do a 5K so we don't have to run 30 miles <laughs> to raise money? But in order for this to work then, we need other people to sign up for the 5K. So if you haven't signed up for the 5K yet, please sign up. The proceeds do go to those uh, charities which are doing great, great work in South Lyon. So they're, they're split equally three ways. Yeah. Yeah. You go to the website, and on the website, you'll see there's a box. That's where the red arrow is. It says Community Care 5K. You click on there. And when we've done this in the past, you may remember we did a 6K a while back for water, and it was just a great opportunity for families to come together. You can walk this, you can run it, and hey, man, we're the ones putting it on. So some people are like, do I have to do the three miles? We're going to be at the middle school track. You just want to take one loop around the track and then go, go grab one of Jerry's cookies, rock on, man. We're, we just want you there, okay, and just there having fun. If you don't even want to do the lap, if you're like, I'm just going to go to the cookies, we're fine with that too. But let's make it a celebration and let's make it an opportunity to really um, to build up those ministries. Because like Dave was saying, they're all people in this town who need health care are helped by Capernaum. And we have seen in, even in our congregation cancer caught early enough that people's lives were saved. I mean, we have two examples of that just in our congregation. How many more are there out there? Uh, Active Faith has been doing great work for years. Uh, Renewed Hope Counseling, great quality professional counseling. And if you can't afford it, you can still get it because you guys support it. So we thank you for that. Here's another way you can support it. <laughs> Jeff and I really don't want to run 31 miles again. I, well, I'm speaking for myself. Jeff. So, so why don't we just challenge everybody? If whoever signs up today still applies, pay for K for how many others signed up. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, we'll do it this way. Today, okay. Well, we could do it for this. If we did... If we did a half a K for everybody that signed up, so if 100 people signed up, we would have to do a 50K again. So if we can get, okay, thanks. <laughs> I, did, I did put you on this. So the last time I announced this, when we decided to do the 33, he didn't know. I'm like, and I think Jeff's going to do it with me. I did that in front of the whole in front of the whole thing. So, all right, no, that's the deal. If 100 people sign up, if 100 people sign up to do the 5K, we will do a 50K. So, please sign up, all right? <laughs> make us run. Kids, here's what, you, here's what you say to your parents. Let's make Pastor Joe run. And his good sidekick, Jeff, all right? <laughs> yeah, you're excited about that, aren't you? All right, finally... <laughs> you want me to run. All right. So we want you to get connected. There's lots of ways to do that. I'm gonna, we're going to go right now to um, our offering. And look, here's the thing. Today we celebrate freedom. We know that one of the places people can feel bondage in a congregation is during the offering time. Feel no obligation to participate in this part of the service. We are glad that you're here. Whether you're joining us in the room or you're joining us on the line, today we, we celebrate that Christ set us free and let nobody put you under a yoke of slavery again. So as we take our offering, we reflect on the words of Scripture. These are good words. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the woman bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. We're going to pray. Yeah, we're going to pray and uh, we'll get back to worship. So this is the time in our service. We pray and then uh, we uh, we lift up who's ever on our hearts. You know, there's a lot of times, I'm sure there's people you know, I know people who they need, they have needs, they're in a, they're in a bad spot, or maybe it's you personally. So we're going to lift all those needs up to our God. So will you pray with me? 
Father God, we're just so grateful for your resurrection and what that means and what that means to our lives right now. And we pray, God, for all the people that are in our, on our hearts, in our mind's eye. You know who they are. You know their needs better than we need them. But you call us to pray and reach out to you. And we do now. We pray you will bring financial needs, that you will bring encouragement, you'll bring healing, uh, you'll bring help, you'll bring hope. We just meet all those needs for those people that we're bringing up to you right now. And we thank you for answering these prayers, and we ask these things in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, if you're in uh, the room and you need communion, please raise your hand and join. I'll come around. Kids. The one and only Mr. Mitchell and Miss Abby is ready for you. So be nice to Miss Abigail and Mr. Mitchell. We know it's Easter morning. We know it's the toughest day to work in children's ministry, Easter morning. <laughs> All right. And uh, Joanne will keep coming around uh, with the communion. So raise your hand when she comes by. And the rest of you, let's rise and let's lift our voices and praise our God. <clears throat> Happy Easter, everyone. As we continue our worship time, we're going to begin by slowing the song down that some of you may know. So we just encourage you to just meditate on these words and just spend this time with Jesus. And just think about the truth and the hope that he brings. just pray with me this morning. Lord, we come to you so thankful this Easter morning for that truth, that we have a God that would chase down the one lost sheep, even when that sheep is me, that no matter how broken or how lost or far I've drifted, you still looked at that cross and then you looked at me said that I was worth it, knowing everything that I might do, Lord. Thank you for chasing me down, for not giving up on me, even when I still fall short every single day. Your grace and your cross amazes me.
Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Let's fill up this room, sing it out. All the earth will shout your praise. Hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. One more time. Great are you, Lord. If you'll pray with me again. Lord, you are a great God. And we come to you this morning with all different places in our hearts. Some of us are filled with joy. Some of us are coming to you with grief or pain or fear. Lord, I just pray that as we come to you, we can just lay this at your feet and just rejoice in what this morning tells us, that you are our hope, that you have overcome the grave, that you have defeated Satan, that no matter what we are walking through right now, that you are there and that you can help us and that you know all that was and all that is still to be. Lord, thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you for enduring what you did for us, for enduring the cross. Thank you for the reassurance that you have not been overcome. Amen. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high. Forever He is risen. stone was rolled away his perfect love could not be overcome now death where is your sting our resurrected king has rendered you defeated forever he is glorified forever Promise your 
buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on Gospel of Luke. Um, this takes place at a time when uh, Jesus had, was risen, but his disciples didn't know it yet. And it's a story about two uh, who had an encounter with him. Luke 24. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their face downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find the body. They came and told us, that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But he said they did not see him. He said to them, How foolish you are, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he broke bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Then they got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, saying, It's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way, 
and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of the Lord. All right, so I wanted to share with you a little bit about why I picked this special song that we're going to just kind of do for you. And if you feel like you know it after a little while, I'd love to hear your voices. But um, I wanted to share with you why I picked this song. So how many of you um, have ever heard of a worship song that has sarcasm in it? <laughs> I haven't. This was the first one I'd heard before, and I kind of tend to be a little bit sarcastic sometimes. So I just want to read some of the words for you. Our king was nailed to the cross, yeah, like love could be broken. Our savior breathed in his last, yeah, like hell had a moment. They laid him down in a grave, like hope could be stolen. And they covered him up with a stone, like I could hold him. And I just love that because sometimes, you know, right now in our world, in our own lives, personally, globally, whatever it is, doesn't it sometimes look like Satan might have the upper hand or something, but he doesn't. He never, 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 ever does. And the people that were there at the tomb, you know, on Saturday, well, not Saturday, whatever day it was, that night, <laughs> you know, before Jesus rose, they probably thought Satan, oh, man, he had the upper hand. He won. But he didn't. Our God is victorious, and Satan never has the upper hand.
If you join me in prayer, Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. And today we seek you. We seek your wisdom and your way. And that's all I want us to hear this morning, your wisdom and your way. So if my words get in the way, just let them go away. So your light would shine in this time and place. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right. So um, let's do something quick as Grace is leaving. First time at Crossroads, the one and only Grace. That's her dad, uh, her dad, John, mom, Shelby. So we got some other, um, Dan and Martha, are this week, not yet, but this week, right? So keep them, oh, a couple of weeks, all right. So you can keep Dan and Martha in your prayers, and you can keep Doug and Christy in your prayers, who just, uh, they just had a little one like a week ago. All right, so on to the... On to the Easter message, we had those two disciples there on the road with Jesus, and they say, we had hoped, but we had hoped. They're kind of downcast. And one of the things that we forget as we, you know, as we do life today is we forget that for most of the history of the church, the people couldn't read the people, you know, they, they would be working all day, then they would come on Sunday. And so the way people would learn their faith is through just simple phrases that they would repeat over and over and over again, and they would become part of their lives, and they would be, become part of the way that they understood God. All right, so if you grew up in, I mean, we do a contemporary style of worship, but if you grew up in a traditional style of worship, like in a Lutheran church or a Methodist church, Episcopal, Catholic, you probably were used to saying this simple acclamation. So what I'm going to invite you to do is say it with me. And for those of you who grew up in traditional church, you'll know it. For the rest of you, just read the words that come up on the screen. Here we go. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So much truth. There's so much beauty in those simple words. And like I say, for most of the history of the church, right, that's how people learn their faith. And so what that simple, that simple saying gives us is what we might call the three tenses of Easter, right? And so we could start with the past tense. Christ has died and Christ has risen, right? We might call this, this is the tense of argument, because it's in the past. And why I say this is the tense of argument, because this is where we say, hey, this really happened. And people who don't believe say, well, no, it didn't happen. And then we go through and we give them the proof for why it happened, right? And so we argue, we argue back and forth. So what did, the, what did those disciples say? But we had hoped. You know, 100 years before Jesus and 100 years after Jesus. So in that kind of 200-year period of time, things were in turmoil in the Middle East. I know, you know, things have changed so much since then. But at that time, things were in turmoil. And the people really felt like, okay, this is it. Things are so bad, the Messiah is coming. And so 100 years before Jesus and 100 years after, there were a number of people who said, it's me, I'm the Messiah. And they got followers and people followed them. And the authorities did to them the same thing that the authorities did to Jesus. They killed him. They executed him publicly in most cases. Some of them just, you know, got away with their lives, but their movements disbanded after their arrests. There's one person who we still follow to this day. And that's because they went from, oh my gosh, he's just like all the other ones to, oh my gosh, he is risen. He's alive. And they would proclaim that and they would stick with that to the point of being executed for stating that. All they had to say is, I'm making it up, and they would have been able to live. But they didn't, because they knew it to be true, and so they said, 
Are you a follower of Jesus? Yes. Do you believe he's risen? Yes. You realize we're going to execute you? Yes. And they did. But because they saw it, they wouldn't lie. So that's one of, right? That's the, te- the past. When we look at the past, it's the tense of argument. So what did uh, Dave, uh, what did we read at, at offering time? Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And then Paul, he's writing to his friends in the town of Corinth, and he's trying to get them to see, like, you guys, this, this is real. So watch how he sets it up. I passed on to you what was most important, what has also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. He's like, hey man, he was seen by 500 people and they're still alive. You can look these people up. You can see these people. You can go talk to them. This has happened. That's That's the past tense of Easter. Let's jump up to the future tense of Easter. Christ will come again. Again, Paul's trying to encourage people this time in a different town. And he says, look, man, we we don't want you, we don't want you, you know, to be uninformed about what happens to people. We believe, right, that the people who have fallen asleep in the Lord will rise again. And when Christ comes, we'll rise with them. Encourage each other with this truth. Encourage each other with this hope. That's the future tense. And as Christians, we can spend a lot of time in the past tense of Easter or the future tense of Easter. And that's where we argue, right? But we have to live in the present tense, right? We live in Christ is risen. Uh, apparently, if you all guys come through, you know, I, I'm running 31 miles again. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, appreciate that. So, but, but here's the thing, you know, it, it, people always make fun of you when you're a runner, you know, people say, I, I don't run unless something's chasing me. There is something chasing me. It's called heart disease and Alzheimer's. And I've, I've watched them up close, and I don't want to live them, right? And, and so I just keep running, and I'm going to keep them at bay as long as I can. But when you're, when you're running, it, it is the Christ is risen spot. Because, see, to, to have fun arguments and discussions and read books about the past, okay, that's fun. It doesn't really require anything of me. To, to focus on the future, that, God's taking care of that, right? That doesn't require me, anything of me. But when Christ is risen in the here and now, that does require something of me, right? That requires me to live my faith and to love like God calls me to love. So the Christ is risen. This is the tense of renewal. This is where God is renewing us as a community and as individuals. And it requires our participation. It requires us to be a part of it. And it'll be difficult at times. (laughs) When you do these really long ones, okay, you you know, you're on a really long, there's times like you you don't know how you're going to get one more, you're going to put one foot in front of the other. And, you know, you just have to focus on the really small. So, like, what, what I will literally do is, like, I'm just be like, I'm going to count to 100, and that's as much as I'm running. And when I get to 100, I say, I'm going to count to 100. That's as much as I'm running. And then I just, you just keep doing that over and over and over till you get to the end. See, the, the part of being a disciple, of being renewed is we... We allow God to transform us, who we are and how we live and how we interact in this world. So some questions that we might, if if we're using this Christ is risen among us, right? How is Christ rising in us right now? 
as a church family, as individuals in this church family, as, as the bigger church family, the churches of South Lyon gathered together, as the bigger group, the churches spread out, right, across, across our community and, and across our country and across our world. How, how is Christ renewing us right now? How is Christ renewing you right now? And here, here's one. Let's do it in, in the negative, right? How are we resisting the call of Christ right now? The Christ who calls us to justice and peace and shalom, peace, right? And unity and oneness. Are we going to allow Christ to rise in us, right? So let's go to let, let's go to Second Corinthians here, and these are my these are my favorite Easter verses. They go like this: Notice the is, notice the present tense, and notice when you are in Christ, who you are. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come; the old is gone; the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to Himself through Christ. And gave us, us, the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Just pause there and let that sink in. We can argue about the truth of the past and we can put our hope in the future, we should do that. That's part of our faith. But when we realize we're Christ's ambassadors, this is calling us to something in the here and now, in this moment. Because as though God were making his appeal through us. Let that humble you. (laughs) But be strengthened by that too, right? That's our call. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Give your life, your heart, your soul to Jesus Christ. When I say, what does that mean to do that? It means you follow. It means means you listen to the stories. It means you're in prayer. It means you're in community. And then my, you know, if you hang around this place, you know this is one of my favorite of all the verses. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Christ is risen means we are becoming the righteousness of God as we yield to the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to do what only the Holy Spirit can do. Mold us, change us, shape us to be more God-like day by day. And then he goes on as God's co-workers... You're an ambassador. You're a co-worker. As as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in my time of favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. The word of our God and King, and we are thankful for them. For in them we find true and everlasting life. So what does it look like practically? Christ rising in us practically. You know, pastors, we are just like everybody else, right? We got our problems and our foibles, and none of us are ever prideful or envious, right? Like we never look at another church and we say, oh my gosh, look what that church is doing. It's so fantastic. I mean, I don't, you know, maybe Dave does, but... um, (laughs) But there I am yesterday, okay, and I I open up my Detroit News, which, you know, I get it electronically, right, and I see this, I see this headline, it's about, you know, the church, what the churches are doing, you know, like during the pandemic thing, okay, and I'm like, I don't want to open that article, because then I'm going to read all these really cool things that all these really cool churches are doing, and, and I'm going to be reminded, right, we need to do more. 
but I got to click on it because it's because it's front page of the Detroit, at least the electronic front page of the Detroit News. And it's a big article about churches in Metro Detroit. So I open it up. Here's the headline. Metro Detroit churches transform to weather trials, needs of pandemic. First sentence. Early in the COVID-19 pandemic, Pastor Samil Thomas received an unforgettable request. His church, City Covenant in Detroit, which earned renown for aiding those in need in the city's Brightmore neighborhood. All right. If you don't know City Covenant Church, we're one of the churches that helped them get up and running. We were one of the churches that at a time we did not have a lot of money, gave them a whole bunch of money so they could get their church started. We've walked with them for the last 12, 13 years as their church has been going. He goes on to talk about that they've been able to provide, you ready for this, 30,000 meals 30,000 meals during the pandemic. Some of the, look, we're just a small part of that, but we're a part of that. Some of those meals were cooked in your kitchens. Those meals were brought down there in your cars. You made it happen because the body of Christ, that's what it looks like when Christ rises within us and the church is the church and the church does what the church is called to do. He goes on, it's a cool article because what I love about it is it's like they use Samil, you know how a writer will use one, will use one person, right? But I mean, he, they've got the Catholics in there, the Methodists in there, the Luther, right? And then it's just, they keep coming back to Samil. So I call him up, I'm like, Dude, what are you being modest? He goes, what are you talking about? What am I doing being modest? I go, you didn't read the article? He goes, no, I don't get the, I don't get the news. He hadn't even read the article. Because he, why? Because he's too busy doing the article, right? That's what it looks like when Christ rises in us. Christ rising in us looks like Renewed Hope Counseling Center. That in this community during, look, during the difficult days when people are stressed out, right? We know addiction went up during the pandemic, overdoses, all this crazy stuff. People need a good quality help. Renewed Hope Counseling was there through the whole thing. You made that happen, right? That's Christ rising in us. Christ rising in us is Capernaum Health Clinic. That even during the pandemic, that we found ways there to keep things going and to keep people connected to health care. Christ rising among us looks like now that we've, you know, gotten farther out of this thing, right? The men's group is back up. The women's group is back up. It looks like men and women being together and encouraging each other. Christ rising within us looks like all those AA meetings that happen in this place, including the one that will happen this afternoon because people struggle, right, on holidays. That's the church being the church. Christ rising in us looks like the, the sin that we still struggle with, that God's still working on us, right? I mean, it's like God was having a joke with me yesterday when he's like, I'm like, okay, am I really going to read this? And I read it, and then I see my buddy Samil, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we are in this story. We are part of this story. And even if Samil wasn't in there, we are part of the story. Because we're part of the church of Jesus Christ in this time, in this place, bringing the good news in this time, in this place. That's the call. That's Christ rising in us. And the more like that envy and that pride gets out of me as I surrender to Christ, then the more I can shine his love and the more I can shine his light and the more you can shine his love and the more you can shine God's light. So, so this thing that God has us on that we celebrate this morning is this. God molds us and shapes us and because God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The more you and I become the righteousness of God, the more God 
light shines in this world, in this church, and in this community. And that's the call. That's always the call, right? That's what it looks like practically. So say it with me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let that be true in our lives. Let it not just be something that happened 2,000 years ago or that's going to happen someday when we all get to heaven, but something that's happening today, right now, in your hearts, your minds, your bodies, your souls, and in our church, because what this world needs more than anything is people who are transformed by the power of God. We see people who aren't transformed by the power of God messing everything up. (laughs) What they need to see is the alternative. Let us be that alternative. Let us be that love and let us be that light as God works in us. That means we got to stay connected to God. And that's why we take communion as a family, right? Keeps us connected to God. So... If uh, Megan, could you, just in case anybody didn't get a chance to get a communion cup, if you still need a communion cup, raise your hand and uh, Megan will bring that around. Um, but as we, as we take communion, I, I want us to just reflect on this, right? Will we receive this love, right, and spread the love of Jesus Christ in the here and now? In this moment, in the Christ is risen moment of the present tense now. So as we take communion, we're remembering the words of the Apostle Paul. He says, when you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To proclaim the Lord's death is to proclaim what we proclaimed this morning, that Jesus is God. He's the God that we love, he's the God that we serve, and he's the God that we follow. And to proclaim his death is to proclaim that that death is not the end of the story. I I love the song that we sang this morning. Death can't hold them. The the stone's not going to hold them back. Love will break through that and break out of that. So when we proclaim his death until he comes, we're proclaiming that that death is a saving death. And it, it saves us as individuals, yes, but it saves all of us, right? As we learn how to love our neighbors, really love our neighbors and really bring peace about into this world. So to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes is to proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And if you come this morning and you say, I don't proclaim that, well, we're not going to ask you to proclaim something you don't believe. But I'm so grateful you're here. And I would invite you to keep coming and hearing these stories about Jesus. And if you want to proclaim that for the first time today, well, then praise God and see me afterwards or see Dave afterwards so we can talk to you about what a life of following looks like. If you're online, drop us a note at infodcrossroads.net and we'll give you a call and talk to you, you know, talk to you about what following looks like. But we're following, right? So what did he tell us to do? On the night before he died, he took bread and He broke it. He gave it to his loved ones. He gave it to his friends. He said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This, this is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. And then he took a cup. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This cup is my blood shed for you, shed for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, as your children gathered here, I'm very mindful that you're still working in my life. And there are still ways that you want to rise up in me. And there are still things that that you're working on. So I just want to say, come, Lord Jesus, and do the work that you need to do. And I want to confess those places to you, Lord, where I have fallen short. Where I don't love you the way I'm called to, and I don't love my neighbor the way I'm called to. And, And I confess this morning not out of fear, because this day tells me do not fear. I confess out of longing. I I do long to be all that you called me to be in the here and the now, in this moment. So I want to confess those places to you, and I invite you in the silence of your hearts to confess those places where you're just like me and you don't love God the way you're called to and you don't love your neighbor the way you're called to. I invite you to do that.
and come, Lord Jesus. And bless the bread and bless the cup. Let it remind us of your love, but so much more than that, may it fill us with your love. May it make your love real and alive and present in our lives so that we can take your love in all the places you would take us. In Jesus' holy name we pray and all God's people said, amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. My brothers and sisters, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And if you join me in prayer, Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we just ask you to continue to come into our lives. Be real in our lives in the here and now so we can shine your light. In Jesus' only name we pray. Amen. One way the light shines, one way that this thing becomes real is when the pandemic hit, it was like, how are we going to keep this thing going? And so the, I'm, the, I'm going to call them the geeks, but I'm saying it in love. And one of them actually did work for the geek squad, so it's a fair... It's a fair characterization. But they literally built a TV studio in the back of this room and learned how to use it so that during the pandemic, the church could stay together. And you know, just Friday night, we looked at, we, we took, added up the people at both services, and then I looked online, and it was literally double the number of people online on Friday night than were in the room on Friday. So this morning, if you're at home, thank you for being here. And thank you for worshiping with us. And lift your voices at home so your neighbors hear this final song, okay? And they wonder what's going on in your neighborhood, all right? But for you in the room, let's rise. Let's lift our voices. Pray. Oh, 
won the victory. Because Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So go and carry this truth and live in the love of Christ. May God's love continue to renew you and empower you to bring God's love into our hurting world. Hallelujah.